Hello and welcome to the Squirrel Punch Podcast, the only podcast where me and Jovin watch a thing and then talk about it. The only podcast that we were allowed to call it Squirrel Punch because no one is here to tell us no. Yeah, we originally wanted to name some other things Squirrel Punch. For years we've been wanting to call something Squirrel Punch. That's true. And it's, to be clear, it's not us punching a squirrel. It's a squirrel no. that can, like a squirrel that knows karate. Yeah. Picture that. Punches. You ever get squirrel punched? If we have Sucks. a if we have a logo, it'll be it'll be a squirrel with like a a black belt or a headband on. And we're kind of just recording this because we want to talk about stuff. We don't really know where it's gonna go or how it's gonna work yet. So there might be a lot of these. It might be a weekly thing. It might be a hey, we saw a movie, so we're gonna talk about a thing. But you know, let's be real. Mari and Soinki can't always keep up with us when it comes to pop culture movies and TV shows that we've seen. So we now we have a place a to air our <laughs> yeah. we, maybe too much stuff. Yeah. And the other thing is, I will just sometimes call Joven, or Joven will call me to discuss a thing that we both saw, and we're like, we should really be making a podcast out of this. <laughs> and so now we are. Because um, I've got unpopular opinions, and Lasercorn has hot takes. Yeah, some of my opinion, opinions are pretty unpopular as well. This movie's been out for a little while, but it mm. just came out on HBO Max, and, and Lasercorn finally had three hours to sit down to watch it. We're uh, talking about the Batman today. I watched it on my birthday. Yeah. What? <laughs> I can't tell if that was sad or... The bad birthday. Was, no, it was good. It was a good way to... Me and yeah. my wife watched it. It was a good way yeah. to spend the birthday. So did you have to, like... Did you wait to, like... Because it's three hours long. Uh -huh. So, like, did you, like, put the kids to sleep first? Like, oh, how yeah. did you dedicate time for this? Yeah, kids went down, and then uh, we started watching it, and then my wife fell asleep, and then I finished watching it. It was great. <laughs> so that, that might sum up her review of it. Yeah, uh, her review is going to be missing some pieces. I, I imagine that uh, you and I will be going over some, some spoilers today. So if oh. you are one of two people that didn't see the movie already, Lasercorn being one of those people, which now you're the only person that hasn't seen it, you might want to hit like and come back later. Yes, good advice. Indeed, spoiler alerts. And in fact... so. Can I start with the thing that bothered me most about this movie, and it's well, at the well, very end of this movie? <laughs> to, to hold some structure here, I want to know what you thought about going into the movie. So, like, you know, a little before and after kind of thing. Oh, sure. Yeah, I didn't like that they were doing the Riddler again. I just think Batman has more villains. We've seen the Riddler. Yes, it was Jim Carrey's version of the Riddler, but I thought they could do, like, Hush or someone else. And, it, like, they could go a little deeper than a character we've already seen on screen. So as as much as I think you you talk about Hush a lot and I think I'm with you on that one. I want to see Hush on screen which I believe is being teased as if there is a sequel we might see Hush cuz you know we did have an easter egg reference to Hush. Yeah, did in you this see movie. Hush pop up when they were talking about the Hush money? Yeah, the Hush yeah. money. I was like that's Hush. that's a different take on Hush but a cool reference. Yeah, that's, that's I'm wondering let's do if that. it has something to do with it. If he was somehow involved in that. Yeah. Because that was very interesting. You could see it. It kind of mm -hmm. stayed on screen for a second. It's like, hush. Yeah. We're we're also getting a bunch of spinoffs from this show. So mm -hmm. I oh, wouldn't we are? be surprised. Yo, oh, you dude, know the, did you not know about the spinoffs? No. Yeah, so we're getting HBO Max TV show spinoffs. Oh, Gotham so PD, which, right? The Gotham PD one, right. I which I could see. I could see Hush being a series bad guy for that, or mm -hmm. at least a, a season bad guy for that. Okay. And we are also getting... Um, uh, an Arkham, an Arkham show, oh. where we'll probably see the uh, Joker pop up again. Where were they at the end of the movie? Were they in Arkham, or was that Blackgate? I don't know. Actually, they had orange outfits, and in other iterations, I believe that's I believe that's uh, Blackgate. Oh, okay. So yeah, I, and I don't really love the Riddler as a character. So I was a little biased going in. I'm like, ah, they're doing the Riddler again, and. You know, he's not my favorite character. I leave little riddles. I want to be caught. <laughs> Plus, he leaves uh, in the Arkham games. He leaves out 7,085 trophies you have to collect. Like someone has way too much time it's, on their hands. Yeah. It's like, they should really, just done that movie. Really, the Riddler had some henchman crawl into the sewer grate just to annoy me and leave a trophy. Like, how much is he it's hard paying to get. that henchman? Maybe it's just yeah. him and one other henchman. It's like, all right. The health benefits are fine. I do like to envision that he has to do it himself. He has to crawl into every <laughs> sewer and crevice and leave it. What did you think of the Pattinson casting, you know, years ago? 
It's, you know, I never saw Twilight, so I don't know what to think about that guy. Is he in other stuff? Uh, yes, since then has been in some amazing stuff. Oh, okay. uh, uh, the Lighthouse, I think, was the last thing I saw him in with uh, with Green Goblin. With Willem Dafoe. They, yeah, I, did, I yeah. didn't see that one. Was that one good? It's an artsy film. Mm -hmm. They do artsy things. Okay. It's a film. There's, I think someone has sex with a mermaid that's not a mermaid. So just like a manatee? He might have had sex with a man and he, I don't know. I fell asleep and then woke back up and was very confused. Oh, okay. I have, for years, anytime someone says anything about a Batman casting, I'm my opinion stays the same. Batman might be the easiest character to play on screen. It's, yeah. it's not hard. Just be a little broody when you got the outfit on. The outfit does mostly acting for you. And then just, you know, be a rich playboy. Yeah, it's, uh, well... When he's, yeah, not Batman. In the few scenes where yeah. he's not Batman. Yeah, I don't think it's a challenging role. <laughs> it's a, no, it's one of the easiest. He's, uh, he's very one note. And I just like any good superhero, the best part of any good superhero are, you know, the villains. And those are the hard things to fill. And and I think, I think in this movie, all of the actors that were playing bad guys in it were phenomenally cast. Yeah, they did great. I agree. I agree with that statement. Penguin was great. Easy now, there, sweetheart. <laughs> yeah, I have to ask this. For those of you oh, that don't yeah. know this about laser corn, <laughs> you're always out of the loop forever. You just always furthest from the Do you know that that was Colin Farrell? No. That was Colin Farrell. Oh, cool. How did you not know that was Colin Farrell? I don't know. What's Do you know who Colin Farrell is? I've heard that name before. What is Okay, he was big... Bullseye, he's the Irish actor. <laughs> Oh, I liked it. I liked him as Bullseye. It's too bad that Ben Affleck was Daredevil. I thought him and oh, what's the guy that was playing Kingpin in that? Uh, what's his name? Uh, Vincent D'Onofrio. No, oh no, no, Michael, Michael, uh, yeah, Michael Clark Duncan. Yes, I thought they had great chemistry. I thought Michael Clark Duncan was a great cast. Oh, he for was Daredevil. phenomenal as Kingpin. Yeah, I thought he was great. Um, yeah, yeah everything team. about that movie was so good, except Ben Affleck is not everything about that movie was good, but. I mean, no, there, the there's casting some was really good, except for Ben Questionable Affleck. bits. I have defended Daredevil, and I kind of still do. It's harder to defend that movie now that we have such a good TV show version. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, I always said that during that time, it was like 2006 or something, it was just a really good comic book movie, right? If you were op if you were to read a comic book, I don't disagree. know. Disagree. Hard disagree. I thought it was a bad movie with glimpses of, of, of really good parts. Yeah. So yeah. So yeah. Oh, Colin, Colin Farrell, Farrell was Penguin, and he was uh, Paul Dino as as Riddler. So you didn't like the Riddler, and then you got to see Riddler on on screen. Uh, did he change your opinion? In yeah, I liked this variation of the Riddler. I thought the Riddler was good. Yeah, I I did like it. I still don't know that I wouldn't have wanted a different villain, but he was good. He was very uh, he's a dark Riddler. You know. So you've got uh, you have. He's just kind of like bumped the Riddler up for you as a, as a decent villain. Yeah, I think he's good. I, I will. I, I'm glad that we'll probably be seeing more of him. So, yeah, I enjoy. I enjoyed his performance as the Riddler. I uh, enjoyed the way he was written. I definitely think he was a good character. I had a con. I don't remember who I even was talking to. Maybe it was you. I don't know. Uh, but we had compared this movie to Seven. Mm -hmm. And it was the same exact, like, it's the same movie. You have a guy that's kind of leaving these clues, uh, that wants to get caught. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you got your twist ending. It, it, essentially, it, it's that. If, yeah. if, you, if, if Brad Pitt would have jumped into, like, a muscle car to, like, go on this high-speed chase, it would have been the same exact movie. Yeah, with, uh, with some Batman-y stuff thrown in there. Uh, there's yeah. definitely some fight scenes. I really, uh, I thought the fight choreography in this movie was really good. Yeah, they, they shot it insanely well. Uh, I think they did a really good job in the beginning. Mm -hmm. You know, that first shot when he's taking on the uh, insane clown posse. That was pretty dope. <laughs> yeah, uh, those guys, their makeup was cooler than the insane cl clown posse. But yeah, I feel like they were a juggalo spinoff group. Definitely. But that was also a trailer scene where I think did a good job in the trailer as setting off the tone for the movie where it's like, sure, it's it's younger Batman. We, we kind of get the timing of it all. They kind of know who he is. They don't know who he is. And then they just keep on that wide shot as he just punches the crap out of someone over and over and over. And it's like, OK, yeah, I want to I want to know what happened to Avocado Head from the opening sequence. Remember, they, they, <laughs> they follow yeah. like three different criminals. And one of them's this guy with the avocado head robbing a store. 
And I'm like, damn, that's a cool mask. I'm like, I wonder what, the, I wonder what this guy's gonna do. I'm like, and it's a character we've never seen before. This is awesome. And then he just, uh, he just shows just, up in the Arkham series. He, maybe he gets hit by a car and then we never see him again. I'm like, oh, I thought that was going somewhere. Is he reformed or is he like taken out by his medical bills so he has to go back to a life of crime to pay for the medical bills? He probably walks with a limp for. The was the car being driven by Batman? Uh, I, need, I have questions. <laughs> no. It, well, he, he exists to show that even if Batman's not everywhere, uh, he still evokes fear in criminals, thus causing them mm. to be less likely to, I don't know, commit crimes or more likely to screw up while they are committing crimes. Or to walk across the street looking up instead of left and right. Yeah, well, he, he looks into a dark alley, yeah. But, yeah, that's the whole purpose of that scene where there's three different people. It's like, he, and he says that, that line, I can't be everywhere at once, but he wants criminals to feel like he's everywhere, always lurking in the shadows. So it was interesting what they did, but then also I'm like, but what's his backstory? <laughs> he's, got, <laughs> he's got, like, a weird avocado yeah, you were completely avocado distracted by man. that for the next two, two hours yeah. and 50 minutes. Avocado man, you're about to get toasted. <laughs> I don't know. Um, he admittedly, dude, what that was bad but yeah. i loved it yeah, avocado toast. like he's a, he's really millennial gen z i don't know yeah go uh on. i i saw it in theaters and i thought that you weren't gonna like it because of how slow the movie was were you okay with like the slow burn of it all i think you actually helped me by telling me that it was really slow paced and i was expecting worse i feel like uh i feel like they did an okay job of cutting in the action, cutting the action just when I was starting to get bored. So yeah, okay, and even the scene, the scenes where he was investigating was good. So no, I wasn't that upset by the pacing. It was three hours. I do remember pausing it at one point and being like, "Jesus, we still have a lot of this movie left." I, I bet it was at the same place that I, I kind of like snapped out of the pacing, which is as soon as they catch the Riddler. Yes, I uh, yeah. We need to talk about. Oh wait, oh the Riddler. Sorry, I thought you said. Yes, as soon as they catch the Riddler, you're like, okay, problem solved. And then there's like the an entire third act or fourth act, really, at that point in time. Oh, but that afterwards. act was great. That act was entirely necessary. I yeah, feel like they could have cut out some stuff earlier, but we needed to see that seawall blow up and stuff. That was awesome. Yeah, because we needed to see something happen. That was cool. Uh, I'm like, holy shit, he's just flooded the whole city. Batman lost. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> Um, and it sucked him right back in. But yeah, you've got some hot takes, and I haven't oh, yeah. heard anyone else mention these. Yeah, so, so I wanted to start with one. It's literally the reason why we recorded today. Yeah, I wanted to start with, my, I mean, it's. I don't know if this is a hot take or what, or a dad take, but the thing that infuriated me most about this movie is the very end shot where they're riding around <laughs> on motorcycles, and it's Batman and Catwoman, and his cape's all whipping around all close to the tire. And <laughs> I'm like, that's an accident waiting to happen. What are you doing? Right? And then, uh, oh, I wanted to talk about the chase scene where they're chasing this down is, the penguin. This is big. This is a big Dude, thing. They right kill here. Like I, so many people. And like, like you have. There's no yeah, one survived people died those, in those giant people. explosions where I guess they were they were having their little drag race around fuel tankers and they crash into them and then the tankers explode and at no point does batman go back and be like holy shit, there might be people trapped in that burning wreckage <laughs> he's just like constantly pursuing the yeah penguin. these are like fast moving vehicles yeah. in bad car accidents like people are in trouble behind him they they have to be there's no way there's not someone caught in a burning car yeah those are my hot takes my my two big hot takes are the cape whipping around behind the bat cycle and then jesus christ they it really seems like they killed a lot of people and didn't give a <laughs> during that. uh I, I like how batman's also just like hanging out with cops later on also and no cop is like hey is that the guy that caused the 20 oh, car yeah. pile up out on the highway yeah, and should we arrest him for that yeah absolutely and there's definitely a scene where he's in close proximity to cops directly after or not directly but sometime after he punched commissioner gordon in the face i'm like oh are they really oh, yeah. not gonna they're really not gonna uh the two things that i actually the one part that i had an issue with that kind of took me out of the movie was you you mentioned the wingsuit part after that punch to the face and i'm like all right that's cool um but also like anyone that knows anything about wingsuit or base diving like that you need you need to have a parachute he had a parachute he, it so got he had a parachute to stop. It, it's got snagged on something and then at that speed, before the parachute can even really work, 
he gets flung up and then smacked uh, by the by the bridge. I think it was. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was not and a smooth so, landing. I remember. Suit or not, you're dead. Now, don't get me wrong. We've seen superheroes survive crazier situations, mm-hmm. but that's the MCU, right? Yeah. That's, you know, the Sony-verse or something. This movie is specifically grounded in reality, where if that's the case, you have to follow reality's rules on physics. Uh, the MCU, they have different physics. Yeah. You can, you can fall in an Iron Man suit and just have your legs broken for a short period of time. That's fine. In this one, if your wingsuit goes wrong and you get hit by a bridge, you're dead. My favorite part of the movie, like, there was a lot of great parts of the movie, but the thing that really stung out... Uh, stuck out for me that they really just hit the nail on the head was after the first outing with Batman and he comes downstairs and sees Alfred. He's got like a a black shirt that's a little baggy and it's like a faded black. He's got like sunglasses mm-hmm. inside. Like he is an emo kid. Yes. 100%. Oh, yeah. And I just love that they portrayed him like spot on the right way. Uh, I, I thought that was great. He's just oh, yeah, like, you hey, like emo Batman. Uh, I, I love emo. Beast where, Batman would be emo. Where Alfred has to be like, turn down your Nirvana and come downstairs and do your homework. <laughs> yes, that is precisely what we should have. <laughs> all right. Um, his parents died. He never got over it. He's like, I'm gonna learn kung fu and wear all black. Like, come on, who? That was that was me in high school. Son's parents dying. Like, that's just what it was. That was everyone's mcr phase yeah i i mean i guess i kind of like him more as a suave billionaire because uh i don't know i feel like he is less suspicious if he's a suave billionaire you know in the other movies he's going out and partying on yachts with like playmates and stuff (laughs) and that kind of definitely in this one it's like hey who do you think batman is i don't know maybe it's that broody 20 something year old who's got eye makeup yeah he's got billions of dollars and like could afford a batmobile (laughs) yeah i feel like it's a little suspicious having him be goth but whatever i it didn't ruin the movie for me it's just no i just it it like it it took me out in a very positive way so i don't know i was just like that's that's i'm just glad that they put that in there i became a matt reeves fan with this film Mm -hmm. a lot of people you know reviewed it and said that it was too long it was kind of boring and i i think that we have the mcu to blame in a large part for that because like endgame changed how we see uh superhero movies Mm -hmm. if it isn't part of a grander scheme of sorts and you know it was like three hours of just like action every 10 minutes Mm -hmm. and this was you know maybe three or four action scenes all the way through um, and they, they called it when they first started making this movie, Matt Reeves was on. He's like, I am making a detective movie with Batman. But Batman's supposed to be like the world's greatest detective. And like, he's been thinking about this puzzle there. That, and that's like, again, why that penguin scene bothers me so much. And he's supposed to be like the world's greatest detective. And then the, the penguin solves one of the clues in like, like 35 seconds while he's being interrogated. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, maybe the penguin then is like, maybe I? the world's greatest defe- uh, detective and becomes, you know, Penguin Man. Penguin Man? Dude, yeah, I would like to see a... W- that would be weird. If Penguin does have kind of a super detective intellect in this world, and I, I don't know if that's consistent <sighs> with the comics, but, like, a weird team-up might be might be fun if they both had the same uh, goals. I, it, what, what's interesting, and we won't get this, but in, uh, in the Flashpoint version of Batman, he doesn't have an Alfred. This is Thomas Wayne. Mm-hmm. Uh, becoming Batman, he doesn't have Alfred. He has Penguin. Oh, yeah? Penguin is his Alfred. I oh, I have to complain about one more thing, jumping back to the movie. Um, so, like, the Riddler's on, like, TikTok, and he's got, like, 500 followers. Couldn't they have just followed his <laughs> <laughs> followed his TikTok or whatever yeah. he's on and been like, oh, I- yeah, when we, where are we meeting up? Oh, yeah, that's the plan? Cool. And then just shut it all down. <laughs> like, no one thought to, like, Google this guy and see if he had a social media presence. That's, like, the first thing you do in the FBI I now. Know. It's like, all right, how many followers does he have? Batman racking his brain about some, like, weird cipher. Meanwhile, he's, like, casting. He's like, okay, guys, get your costumes ready. Everyone order your guns and masks off this site. We're going to meet up. <laughs> Meanwhile, he's staring at the dumb cipher. I almost wonder if that's the Riddler's plan. It's like, yeah, I don't think Batman 
man knows about social media. He yeah. seems like kind of a boomer. I'm just going to distract him with the cipher and then I'll be over here. At I like to think that like Paul Dino's yeah. Riddler is just like has too much time on his hands on social media. He's like, yeah, maybe I'll start like my own OnlyFans account. <laughs> it's true. It's like only riddles. That's true. Batman goes to his uh, like actually finds it. He's like OnlyFans. It's like, what? 15 bucks a month. I'm not paying for this. And that's why he didn't get oh. any of the clues. Now, now we need a spin off series of the Riddler coming to power. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's also you mentioned Penguin. That's another another spinoff series is oh, the, penguin? Uh, the Penguin. Yeah, Colin Farrell's uh, rise to power. Now, in these spinoff series, Joven, you know more about this than me. Is the is Batman going to make appearances? Is he going to like show up in certain episodes? I don't know, and I don't know if that's been talked about yet. That would be a uh, I, that would be a way for DC, I feel like, to really elevate their uh, series game because, uh, yeah, I think one of the like a huge draw or kind of, I would almost, it's almost like a publicity stunt, right? When the mm-hmm. Justice League showed up at the end of Peacemaker, people are like, oh, uh, sh-. like that. I feel like that got people that weren't even watching the series. Also, I, I completely forgot is is the Batgirl movie, mm-hmm. movie, not TV show, movie. Which is in this universe. Really? Yeah. So do you think they have like a multiverse going? Like, could this could this uh, guy uh, cross over? Uh, uh, since since the Discovery buyout of Warner Brothers, I I don't know. I think that if these are successful, they'll just live on their own and they can always say multiverse. Um, but I think that we are going to get a very severe reset, which kind of sucks for like movies like, you know, Black Adam um uh the shazam sequel mm-hmm. uh even aquaman 2 but i'm gonna boycott because amber heard uh i don't Is know aquaman it just, it just 2 out like yet? A... No, no, oh. no 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 wait aquaman uh, but 2 it's on their slate aquaman 2 is supposed to come out yes uh so i just think we're gonna you know get what we have and then get a, a hard reboot and then start over because i think they're looking for their own kevin feige yeah someone who has the vision to like kind of pull everything together which, but that's also what they tried to do earlier uh, when we started to do, like, like around the time of Justice League. Mm-hmm. I think they, they brought on some, like, the, the uh, Jim Lee, I think, was supposed to be their Feige. Well, um, but not everyone can be a Feige. I also, going back, I, I was talking about the pacing in, in The Batman. I really do want to state that, double down and say that you can't let MCU movies spoil other styles of superhero movies. Mm-hmm. Because this was a slow-paced detective movie with Batman, and when you watch it as such, it's really good. Never mind the fact that, you know, Batman should have died in a hang gliding incident, and then when he got exploded (laughs) in the face. Oh, yeah, uh, he just kind of shrugged off that explosion. We didn't even talk about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the bomb went off right in his face. Just walked walked away. Yeah. Like, he's completely fine. Uh, Again, shout-out. This isn't again, but shout-out to uh, How It Should Have Ended. They did a fantastic version of of the Batman, which, yeah, they they do it right. (laughs) Because... Don't wait. In How It Should... So you've seen it already? Does the cape get caught in the motorcycle wheel in How It Should Have Ended? No. Damn it. No. Why don't they call me? Call me How It Should Have Ended. That just means that your joke, your joke is unique. Yeah. Oh, overall, as we kind of like wrap up this late to the game review, uh, what, what would you, how would you overall rate it? I give it like an eight. You? Um, uh, yeah, I, I think it's a, it's a watch once movie for me. Mm. I'm glad I saw it in the theaters. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how to give it a numerical number, but an eight feels right. I would watch more in this universe, so I'm excited for the TV shows. I thought, I thought Pattinson was perfect and might actually be my favorite Batman. Like my Batman and Bruce Wayne combo. I think he does both perfectly. Christian Bale is a very close second. Yeah, it's kind of hard for me to tell. I, yeah, I do like Christian Bale as Batman, even though the voice, you know, grated yeah. on me at first. It's very hard to tell because, like I said, I'm not sure I agree with how they wrote him as like this goth emo kid. And I, it would be interesting to see uh, how he would do if he was playing a more suave millionaire type. But, but keep in mind, because Bruce Wayne is always really the mask of Batman. Mm-hmm. So this Bruce Wayne, this emo kid, will eventually turn into that playboy guy who's like, all right, we have to like keep up appearances. So like in a second or third movie, I think we'd see him kind of fall into that. Yeah. Because again, he's, what, early 20s versus... Yeah, yeah I think you're right. You know, later in life. So yeah, I definitely think 
seeing him kind of grow into that character would be great, and I'd like to see how he... Before I declare him the best Batman, I'd like to see him a little character growth out of him. But, yeah, yeah, I agree he did pretty good as as the Batman side of things. Let me ask you this as we're wrapping up. Oh, first of all, can I get your ranking out of 10? I'd say an 8. Yeah, yeah eight. I think an 8 is a good spot. It's fair. I think it's a great movie. I, I really do. Could it have been better? Yes. Were there some issues? Yes. Let, let me ask you this. What Batman movies were better than this movie? Oh, that is a good question. Um, I think that I would still put The Dark Knight over Dark Knight's still number like one in my book, exactly. Yeah. People like to complain about that being a Joker movie, not a Batman movie, and that's what makes a Batman movie the Batman is because it's all about the villains. Um... I give a lot of love to Batman Begins, but I think overall as a I hate film, Batman I think Begins. this one was better. He summons bats yeah. in that movie, Joven. Oh, yeah. You hate when people I summon bats. Summon That's bat. why, oh, we should, yeah, that, we should do a Morbius that, review. Yeah, part of part of what started this whole podcast was me complaining about Morbius summoning bats. and do, well, do, uh, One of my many complaints <laughs> about the Morbius movie. Stop summoning bats. I don't think it's cool or fun. <laughs> don't do it. Uh, but, yeah, he summoned bats, which is even more out of character for Batman than Morbius, and it really annoyed me. Um, and I, I just I went back and watched that movie and I just didn't think it was good at all. Um, yeah. Dark Knight is definitely still my number one. And then I really like which one was Mr. Freeze. I'm a sucker for Freeze. Don't do, you can't, really? Yeah. You're going to give Batman and Robin in a top <laughs> three of Batman movies here? I don't know, man. I, I really thought that it was corny and fun. I, I think my top three go uh, Dark Knight. The Batman, and I go Batman Returns as my number three. Okay, which which one's that? Yeah, that's that's the that's the Tim Burton one with Penguin and Catwoman. Yeah, that one's all right. I like it. Oh, that has uh, uh, that has Christopher Walken in it too. Yeah, that one's pretty good. That it does. That it does. All right. Uh, good good podcast. I guess we gotta find a yeah. We did we did the thing. We find a place for uh, it to live, but yeah. So now whenever we watch movies or. I don't know. Doctor Strange is coming out. Yeah. We'll, we'll see if I have time to see Doctor Strange. You got a baby coming um, out too. Yeah, that that's the thing that's happening. Uh, but even you know, maybe we'll we'll jump on for like small small mini pods when like there's some interesting news that comes out. We're like, oh man, did you see this? Which mini-pod. might be weird for you because you never pay attention to to news stories. I don't. You were I, surprised to see Doctor Strange when you went to the theater for No Way Home. Yeah. No wait. No. Doctor Strange was the one character I knew about because I saw him on a billboard. Oh, like the day before yeah, or something? Yeah, I was surprised. I think I told you when I learned that Doctor Strange was in the movie that I was upset that it got spoiled for me by a billboard. Yeah. yeah. I was like, wow, people have known that for like a year <laughs> yeah. and a half. That's, uh, yeah. I commended I went, you I on that. I went and complained. I don't watch trailers. I don't think I watched a trailer for the Batman. Don't don't watch the Love and Thunder trailer. I, I don't know if you do, you... do you know what's supposed to happen in, in yes, Love and Thunder? Yes, because I have seen a poster. So I know that Jane Foster becomes Thor. But I. Okay. But beyond yeah. that, they also, I've, I've like, not seen a trailer. Three years ago, four years ago, announced that at Comic Con. Yeah. So how you missed that? I don't. I don't yeah, know. it's been around uh, too much for me to miss it. But yeah, we'll we'll find reasons to do more of these. Yeah. So yeah, squirrel, squirrel punch.